Welcome to Health Management Information Systems, Electronic Health Records. This is Lecture A. This lecture will define an electronic medical record, EMR, and electronic health record, EHR, and explain their similarities and differences. Identify attributes and functions of an EHR, discuss the issues surrounding EHR adoption and implementation, and describe the impact of EHRs on patient care. The objectives for this lecture, Electronic Health Records, Lecture A, are to state the similarities and differences between an electronic medical record, EMR, and electronic health record, EHR. Identify attributes and functions of an EHR. Describe the perspectives of healthcare providers and the public regarding acceptance of or issues with an EHR, which can serve as facilitators of or major barriers to its adoption, and explain how the use of an EHR can affect patient care safety, efficiency of care practices, and patient outcomes. Historically, patient records have been paper-based. As in other industries, healthcare organizations have rapidly adopted electronic systems for their medical records. There are two terms associated with the electronic form of a medical record. They are electronic medical record, or EMR, and electronic health record, or EHR. The report, Defining Key Health Information Technology Terms, defines an EMR as an electronic record of health-related information on an individual that can be created, gathered, managed, and consulted by authorized clinicians and staff within one healthcare organization. This same report stated, health-related information encompasses health, wellness, administrative data, and information derived from public health and scientific research. It includes past and present observations and facts documented in the provision of health care that may be related to preventing illness and promoting wellness or that may be used in the process of informing consent. An electronic medical record is a record of medical care created, managed, and maintained by one health care organization. This does not mean a single physical location. There may be instances when information is shared among multiple facilities, and still be within one EMR. For example, an electronic record used in a physician practice with several offices is still an EMR, when all sites are using the same proprietary data structure and architecture and the information is not moving outside the confines of the organization. EMRs are the electronic equivalent of an individual's legal medical record for use by providers and staff within one healthcare organization. The purpose of an EMR is to provide an electronic equivalent of an individual's legal medical record for use by providers and staff within one healthcare organization. The EMR is understood to meet specific business needs for care, reimbursement, and disclosure. Follow regulation and rules promulgated by federal, state, or accrediting entities and contain information as defined by the provider organization. The electronic medical record encapsulates a record of medical care provided in a single healthcare organization, i.e., an intra organizational medical record. As a way of introduction to electronic health records, let's identify why a patient or medical record exists in the first place. According to Dr. Reiser, the purpose of a patient record is to recall observations, to inform others, to instruct students to gain knowledge, to monitor performance, and to justify interventions. The medical record is a way of communicating between staff managing patient care. It also allows for an integrated view of patient care. The patient medical record is also the legal business record for a health care provider. As the American Health Information Management Association, AHIMA, EHIM Work Group on Maintaining the Legal EHR, pointed out in the article, Maintaining a Legally Sound Health Record, Paper and Electronic. In this same article, the work group states, as such, it must be maintained in a manner that follows applicable regulations, accreditation standards, professional practice standards, and legal standards. The other term associated with electronic records 
is Electronic Health Record, or EHR. The report defining key health information technology terms also provided a definition for electronic health record. An EHR is an electronic record of health-related information on an individual that conforms to nationally recognized interoperability standards and that can be created, managed, and consulted by authorized clinicians and staff across more than one healthcare organization. Being a repository of individual health records that reside in numerous information systems and locations, EHRs are intended to support efficient, high-quality, integrated healthcare, independent of the place and time of healthcare delivery. Consequently, EHRs are part of a health information technology infrastructure. The purpose of an EHR is to provide an electronic equivalent of an individual's health record for use by providers and staff across more than one healthcare organization. An EHR is interorganizational, that is, two or more unrelated healthcare organizations contribute to the record, which becomes an aggregation of one record focused around a person's comprehensive health history rather than being one provider's record. However, to arrive at this level of information aggregation, all contributors must be able to send and receive information using standards that facilitate the interoperable exchange of health-related information. An EHR is intended to support efficient, high-quality, integrated health care, independent of the place and time of health care delivery. It encapsulates an electronic equivalent of an individual's health record for use by providers and staff in multiple unrelated facilities. As the National Alliance for Health Information Technologies report, defining key health information technology terms explained, the principal difference between an EMR and an EHR is the ability to exchange information interoperably. An EMR aligns with the prevailing state of electronic records today, whether the record is branded an EMR or an EHR. However, the movement of the industry is toward electronic records that are capable of using nationally recognized interoperability standards, which is a key defining component of an EHR. Adding to NAHIT's principal difference, other comparisons illustrating similarities and differences between an EMR and EHR are shown in Table 3.1. The first row in Table 3.1 states, an EMR is a record of medical care created, managed, and maintained by one healthcare organization, intra-organizational, while an EHR is a repository of individual health records that reside in numerous information systems and locations, interorganizational. The second row explains an EMR is an integration of healthcare data from a participating collection of systems from one healthcare organization in contrast to an EHR which is an aggregation of health-related information into one record focused around a person's health history, i.e., a comprehensive longitudinal record. The third row points out an EMR is consulted by authorized clinicians and staff within one healthcare organization, while an EHR is consulted by authorized clinicians and staff across more than one healthcare organization. The fourth and final row reiterates NAHIT's principal difference, that is, in an EMR, data continuity exists throughout one healthcare organization, but in the case of an EHR, data interoperability across different organizations occurs. While these distinctions can be made between an EMR and EHR, many regard the two terms as synonymous. According to a Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services fact sheet, Electronic Health Records at a Glance, electronic health records improve care by enabling functions that paper records cannot deliver. These include, EHRs can make a patient's health information available when and where it is needed. It is not locked away in one office or another. EHRs can bring a patient's total health information together in one place and always be current. Clinicians need not worry about knowing the drugs or treatments prescribed by another provider, so care is better coordinated. EHRs can support better follow-up information for patients. For example, after a clinical visit or hospital stay, instructions and information for the patient can be effortlessly provided. 
and reminders for other follow-up care can be sent easily or even automatically to the patient. EHRs can improve patient and provider convenience. Patients can have their prescriptions ordered and ready even before they leave the provider's office, and insurance claims can be filed immediately from the provider's office. Additionally, EHRs can link information with patient computers to point to additional resources. Patients can be more informed and involved, as EHRs are used to help identify additional web resources. EHRs don't just contain or transmit information, they also compute with it. For example, a qualified EHR will not merely contain a record of a patient's medications or allergies, it will also automatically check for problems whenever a new medication is prescribed and alert the clinician to potential conflicts. EHRs can improve safety through their capacity to bring all the patient's information together and automatically identify potential safety issues, providing decision support capability to assist clinicians. The final group of ways in which EHRs can improve care, according to CMS, are EHRs can deliver more information in more directions while reducing paperwork time for providers. For example, EHRs can be programmed for easy or automatic delivery of information that needs to be shared with public health agencies or quality measurement, saving clinician time. EHRs can improve privacy and security. With proper training and effective policies, electronic records can be more secure than paper. EHRs can reduce costs through reduced paperwork, improved safety, reduced duplication of testing, and most of all, improved health through the delivery of more effective health care. With regards to improving privacy and security, EHRs can be encrypted and stored on password-protected systems, thereby restricting their access to only those authorized. In addition, systems can track who accessed a record, when it occurred, and for what purpose. Firewalls and other physical security measures can be put in place to prevent unauthorized users from gaining access to patient records. Overall, EHRs have the potential for improvements in patient safety and quality. However, improvements are not an automatic result of implementing an EHR. Thus, an electronic health record is not an electronic version of the paper record. An electronic health record has additional attributes or properties that a paper record does not. The Healthcare Information and Management System Society, or HIMSS, described eight attributes of an electronic health record in their report, HIMSS Electronic Health Record Definitional Model. The first two attributes are that the EHR provides secure, reliable, real-time access to patient health record information where and when it is needed to support care, captures and manages episodic and longitudinal electronic health record information. The next three attributes as described in the HIMSS report are the EHR, functions as clinician's primary information resource during the provision of patient care, assists with the work of planning and delivering evidence-based care to individual and groups of patients, and supports continuous quality improvement, utilization review, risk management, and performance monitoring. The final three attributes listed in the HIMSS report are the EHR, captures the patient health-related information needed for reimbursement, provides longitudinal, appropriately masked information to support clinical research, public health reporting, and population health initiatives supports clinical trials. In addition to those identified in the HIMSS report, two additional attributes are the EHR supports timely access to patient information, and by more than one person at a time and provides the ability to generate reports that can help measure activity and determine levels of compliance with policies and evidence-based medicine protocols. In addition to the HIMSS report, Health Level 7 International, or HL7, published an EHR system functional model. According to HL7's website, HL7 
is an ANSI accredited standards developing organization dedicated to providing a comprehensive framework and related standards for the exchange, integration, sharing, and retrieval of electronic health information that supports clinical practice and the management, delivery, and evaluation of health services. HL 7, 2011, Paragraph 1. The HL7 EHR System Functional Model establishes EHR systems, EHRS, standards that will enable the development of EHRS based on one set of functional requirements. The model contains three sections. They are direct care functions, supportive functions, and information infrastructure functions. According to the HL7 EHRS model, direct care functions are functions employed in the provision of care to individual patients. Direct care functions are the set of functions that enable delivery of health care or offer clinical decision support. Subsets of direct care functions include managing clinical history, managing orders, managing results, and managing care coordination and reporting. Some examples of the clinical history subset are the capability to manage problem lists, manage lists of allergies that a patient has, and maintain a list of medications that the patient is currently using. For the managing orders subset, examples include orders for medication, lab test orders, blood bank orders, and dietary orders. The communication to the ancillary departments and individuals in the healthcare organization is managed by this subset, as well as the work list that each department may use for fulfilling the orders. Examples for the care coordination and reporting subset are functionality to coordinate care with other providers, both internal and external, and communication of care provided to other providers. The HL7 EHRS model describes administration support functions as functions that support the delivery and optimization of care, but generally do not impact the direct care of an individual patient. These functions assist with the administrative requirements associated with the delivery of health care, provide support for medical research and public health, and improve the global quality of health care. Other functions of an EHR, according to the HL7 EHRS model, include care provision support, population health support, record infrastructure, and trust infrastructure. These are important areas for an EHR. Care provision support functions include record management, result reporting support, and patient education support. Although these functions do not directly support patient care, they are critical to supporting patient care functions. Population health support functions are needed for supporting efforts to support the spread and control of disease among a group of people. This section includes functions to support input to systems that perform medical research, promote public health, and improve the quality of care at a multi-patient level. The record infrastructure functions are common to EHR systems and include record management particularly those functions foundational to managing record life cycle and functions to archive and restore records. The trust infrastructure functions of an EHR are necessary to ensure privacy and security of the data. These functions apply to system operations, security, efficiency, and data integrity assurance, safeguards for privacy and confidentiality, and interoperability with other systems. In addition to HL7's EHRS standards, the Office of the National Coordinator for Health Information Technology published the Health Information Technology Initial Set of Standards, Implementation Specifications, and Certification Criteria for Electronic Health Record Technology Final Rule, which includes the following standards for the certification of EHR technology. Content Exchange Standards for Exchanging Electronic Health Information for example, the National Council for the Prescription Drug Programs, NCPDP, Prescriber, Pharmacist Interface, Script, Standard, or the HL7 Clinical Document Architecture, CDA, Release 2, Continuity of Care Document, CCD.
Vocabulary Standards for Representing Electronic Health Information Two examples of vocabulary standards are the systemized nomenclature of medicine clinical terms and logical observation identifiers, names, and codes. Standards for Health Information Technology to Protect Electronic Health Information Created, Maintained, and Exchanged. For example, one standard is any encryption algorithm identified by the National Institute of Standards and Technology as an approved security function in Annex A of the Federal Information Processing Standards Publication 140-2. Another example is a hashing algorithm with a security strength equal to or greater than Secure Hash Algorithm SHA-1 as specified by the National Institute of Standards and Technology. With more and more healthcare providers moving away from paper-based to adoption of an electronic medical record with the ultimate goal of implementing an electronic health record, it stands to reason a question one might ask is, why aren't we there yet? To answer that question, the perspectives of healthcare providers and the public regarding acceptance of or issues with NEHR will be explored. First, from the standpoint of the provider, EHR acceptance is on the rise throughout the healthcare community, as more and more research supports the benefits far outweigh the costs. Regarding costs to implement, Monetary incentives were put in place by the federal government to stimulate EHR adoption. Momentum for widespread adoption and implementation has picked up since the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, or ARRA, was signed into law February 2009. ARRA provided many different stimulus opportunities, investing over $34 billion for health IT. The Health Information Technology for Economic and Clinical Health, often referred to as HITECH, is a provision of the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act. The funding assisted providers and states in adopting and utilizing health IT in order to achieve widespread adoption of health IT and enable electronic exchange of health information. In addition to the ARRA Meaningful Use Funding, Changes to how clinics and hospitals are reimbursed were introduced in the Affordable Care Act. These changes include more requirements for sharing information between providers of care and focused on patient health. These efforts may only be possible with electronic health records. Providers have also begun to accept EHRs since the establishment of the EH certification bodies. With certification, a certain comfort level exists with regards that the EHR purchased and implemented will have longevity and meet specific requirements. ONC authorized testing and certification bodies include Drummond Group, InfoGuard Laboratories, SLI Global Solutions, ICSA Labs, and SureScripts. The American National Standards Institute, ANSI, has been approved as the ONC approved accreditor, AA, for the Permanent Certification Program. A recent study by Anchor showed high expectations and support for electronic health records. Patients expect that EHRs will improve quality, and patient privacy is an expectation, not to be correlated to whether their provider has an EHR or not. Another poll conducted by Harris Interactive among 2,035 U.S. adults showed little change from 2009 to 2010 with regards to adults' attitudes of electronic medical records. 78% in both 2009 and 2010 answered strongly, somewhat agree, that all physicians treating me should have access to information contained in my EMR. 72 and 71% in 2009 and 2010 respectively answered strongly, somewhat agree, that an EMR would be a valuable tool to track the progress of my health. Even with acceptance on the rise, barriers still exist. An editorial, Stimulating the Adoption of Health Information Technology, describes barriers to adoption as their substantial cost, the perceived lack of financial return from investing in them, the technical and logistical challenges involved in installing, maintaining, and updating them, 
and consumers and physicians' concerns about the privacy and security of electronic health information. Each one of these has its own complexities. For example, logistical challenges would include resources issues, training and retraining, resistance by potential users, and development of new workflow processes. The possibility of poor clinical system performance would impact provider productivity and also become a significant barrier to adoption. Privacy and security concerns include identity theft and widespread exposure of personal health information with the risk of it being seen by unauthorized personnel if it is sent electronically. Breaches through stolen laptops or hacking is also a concern. Another barrier to adoption is the perceived lack of return on investment to the practitioner. Even though perceived or bona fide barriers do exist, potential benefits to adopting and implementing EHRs are surfacing. With respect to having an effect on patient care safety, they include reducing the need to repeat tests, reducing the number of lost reports, and supporting provider decision making. EHRs also have an effect on efficiency by improving accessibility of patient information. For example, being able to access reports anytime, anywhere. Integrating data from multiple internal and external sources. For example, improving charge capture. And facilitating coordination of healthcare delivery. For example, no need to retrieve and copy paper charts provides the ability to hardwire processes. Processes can be designed to be most efficient and safe and then implemented into the electronic health record, preventing workarounds. The final effect of EHR adoption and implementation is on patient outcomes. An EHR has the potential to improve the quality of patient care and help providers practice better medicine. Being a repository of individual health records that reside in numerous information systems and locations, EHRs are intended to support efficient, high-quality integrated health care, independent of the place and time of health care delivery. An EHR also has the potential to provide seamless exchange of information among providers. Further, by moving toward electronic systems that provide patients access into their chart, we can improve patient engagement in their care. This concludes Lecture A of Electronic Health Records. This lecture defined an electronic medical record, EMR, and an electronic health record, EHR, and explained their similarities and differences, identified EHR attributes and functions, discussed the issues surrounding EHR adoption and implementation, and described the impact of EHRs on patient care.